What's up Fox, Dan Fox here and this is the RX 550. Can we get this low-end graphics card to game at 60 FPS with AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution? Let's find out. Join the Fox Den Discord down below. And if you like my content, consider subscribing. The AMD RX 550 was always targeted as a gaming card, but it was always directed towards esports titles. However, can AAA titles actually stand up with this little 2 gig card? This card has a base clock of 1100 MHz with a boost clock of 1183. RX 550s vary wildly, but I will trust this that says a 50 watt TDP with a 250 watt suggested PSU. But as you can see, this is an HP pre-built OEM graphics card. And it really doesn't look like much. It's got a tiny little fan, so I expected temperatures to be high. And it just looks like a pretty default looking card. But none of that matters as long as it can game, right? So let's hop into the benchmarks. So the video games that I'm gonna be testing today are Terminator Resistance and the Rift Breaker demo. Starting off with Terminator Resistance, I put everything at low at 1080p. Without AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, we hit 42 FPS on average with a 1% low of 35 and a 0.1% low of 29. Bumping it up to ultra quality meant a closer to 60 FPS average, with 54 being the actual average itself, with a 1% low of 41 and a 0.1% low of 32. The quality preset is where things started to look a little bit like oatmeal, but we hit an average FPS of 65, with a 1% low of 51 and a 0.1% low of 35. And at the performance mode, we hit an average frame rate of 92 with a 1% low of 69 and a 0.1% low of 48. So although it ran the best, it looked pretty bad. Everything started to look spudgy and I would say anything below the quality preset looked much more like 720p than anything else. But I decided to test something else out because I do have a 1440p monitor. I tried it out at 1440p with the oatmeal setting performance. I was able to get 40 FPS on average with a 1% low of 31 and a 0.1% low of 26. Now granted it didn't look like 1440p but the fact that I was able to run 1440p at the ultra settings was very very impressive. Although it's nothing like Nvidia's DLSS it actually still is pretty good especially if you are going for 1440p rather than 1080p but even so the ultra quality preset is pretty much like standard I think. If you're playing at 1080p you won't see much of a difference with the ultra quality preset and it'll boost you about 10 frames in most games. And now it's time for Rift Breaker. I used the GPU benchmark on this and I also used everything at the highest possible settings at 1080p. Without any fidelity FX, the Rift Breaker demo ran at 42 FPS with a 1% low of 37 and a 0.1% low of 36. Now granted, I will admit that in game, it is a little bit lower than this. I think this is just stressing GPU and not accounting for CPU at all, but it did run a bit worse in the actual game itself. So with the ultra quality preset, we saw an average of 51 FPS, a 1% low of 44 FPS, and a 0.1% low of 44 FPS. So this game is nothing if not stable, and it also looked pretty good at ultra quality as well, with everything on ultra. The quality preset next got closer to 60 FPS, with 58 being the average, with a 1% low of 50 and a 0.1% low of 50. Once more, a very smooth experience. The balanced preset got us over the hump at 64 FPS, on average with a 1% low of 56 and a 0.1% low of 55. This started to look bad though. I think again ultra quality is the best way to play this game but test it for yourself or look at the results and see what you would play as and leave it down in the comments below. And last but not least the performance mode ran at an average of 70 FPS with a 1% low of 62 and a 0.1% low of 61. This was very impressive but again it looks bad. Unless you have a smaller display for instance if you have an RX 550 laptop then some of these lower settings may be pretty good for you because an RX 550 will struggle and as more games get fidelity FX it'll help extend the longevity of these cards which we desperately need. So those are the benchmark results and although performance performance mode looks bad and anything honestly below ultra quality at 1080p looks bad but the fact that we were able to play almost AAA titles none of these are real AAA titles yet but I would consider Terminator Resistance to be the most graphically intensive one at 1440p with the ultra settings and getting above 30 FPS is something I didn't expect an RX 550 to do 
for reference, 1440p usually gave about 20 FPS on average without any fidelity FX. So it does seem like fidelity FX does help frame rates, but there is a cost in visuals, which is unsurprising considering that's what everybody else on the planet said. However, everybody else on the planet also tests this with like a 6900 XT or uh, the RTX 3080, and it's like uh, the RX 550 was made for this. All the 5 series needs this, and that's going to be awesome to see in the future. But that was my video on the fidelity FX super resolution. I would recommend giving it a try yourself. It's free after all, but the games for it are limited right now. However, as more games come out, I will be doing an updated review with an RX 550. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, like, subscribe, do what you usually do, and as always, buy yourself something nice.